just so peaceful, isn't it, guys? Everything's happy. Uh-oh. Hold on. Oh, this doesn't look good. Avatar! Know that Britannia has entered into a new age of enlightenment. Know that the time has finally come for the one true lord of Britannia to take his place at the head of his people. Under my guidance, Britannia will flourish, and all of the people shall rejoice and pay homage to their new guardian. Know that you too shall kneel before me, Avatar. You too will soon acknowledge my authority, for I shall be your companion, your provider, and your master. <laughs> that doesn't sound very nice, does it, guys? It is one of my favorite games of all time. Without a doubt, a game I would have to put in the top five. Ultima 7. On the PC, The Black Gate, and Serpent Isle. Ultima 7 was split up into two essentially separate games, but it retained the same number in the series because Lord British, aka Richard Garriott, had a habit of uh, basically creating a new game engine for each numbered Ultima. So in order to release both Ultima 7 the Black Gate and Ultima 7 the Serpent Isle, without changing the core engine, he decided to just, well, keep it Ultima 7 and just split it up into two parts. But essentially it's two different games, there are some differences between the two, however it does use the same engine. Let's create a character named Fox, male, journey onward my friends, journey onward. I'm using the Sound Blaster sound effects. I think I may switch that because it's starting to sound a little annoying, some of the sound effects. Depending on what kind of computer you had, despite the fact that there's amazing music in here that I, I wouldn't even mind putting on a CD and listening to in my car, especially the track known as Stones, uh, some of the sound effects could sound pretty bad, ear gratingly bad. This is YOLO. I don't know how to pronounce these guys' names, it doesn't really matter. This guy's been with you for many an Ultima game. I'm gonna skip a lot of the story, but basically there's some trouble in Britannia, including this earthquake, which we're gonna go check out as soon as possible. <coughs> it is the Avatar. If you guys are not familiar with Ultima games, you are the Avatar. You are basically this hero, a generic hero which you create upon each game, whether it's male, female, your name. Some of you even pick a class and, and race, but they got rid of that whole idea. Now, the new version of the Avatar uh, in the later versions of the game was basically a human from Earth. So you basically summon from Earth into this land known as Britannia, which resembles Earth in some ways to, you know, solve their problems, or to quest and be the paragon of virtue. Alright, dost thou accept? So we're going to see if we can figure out, you know, the name of the killer. So there's been a murder in town. Of course we're going to accept it. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I've been having a cough lately. Hast thou searched the stables? Nigh. Alright, let's go check out the stables, guys. Oh, holy crap. Wow. And before we go any further, let's change it back to Roland MT32. Let's see if that sounds better. I'll take that key, thank you very much. Wow, that's... that's gruesome. Now notice you can interact with most objects in the game. You can even bake bread by combining water and flour and putting it in the... oh! Crap! Woo, look at that. You can search corpses and all sorts of cool, fun stuff. Here, take that jewelry. We'll sell some of these goods. Now, Ultima 7, just like most Western-style RPGs, especially older ones, 
has this situation where it's hard to get enough gold to get the items in the game that you need, not that you buy a lot in this game anyway. So, what is the solution, guys? You know what the solution is. Steal everything not nailed to the floor. But in this game, you are the avatar, so you're really not supposed to do that. You're supposed to be virtuous. Apollonia shuts her eyes and shakes her head as she is just bitten into very sour lemon. I can't even read. Oh, that was so hideous. How could anyone do something so horrible? Art thou searching for information? I do hope thou dost find the person responsible. So do I. Uh, you know, it's a cool font here. I think there's some other options where we can... Uh, this is being run through the Exalt engine. Basically, people remade the engine for Ultima so that you could play it on modern systems. If you want the actual, fully authentic experience, you're going to have to play it using DOSBox. But Exalt just runs a lot more smoothly, and it smooths out some of the problems from before. But I'll keep it as authentic as possible for the most part. Okay, double click closes. Gumps, right click, co yes, I want that. Gumps pause game, yes. Cheats enabled, no, we don't want cheats. Paper dials, yes. Now the paper dials, I'll show you what that is. Let's try the smooth scrolling. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, that looks so unnatural for this game. Hmm. <laughs> This is so, it's, it's neat the way they did this. Let's try it at 50% and see how that looks. Okay, it looks a little less jerky. Alright, first things first. What are these? Ring and ring. I'll take those. They'll tell you not to touch it because obviously you're stealing. But what do you do? You take it all anyway. Now, the game had an awkward system where you you could never quite know 100% when you were going to get caught for doing something. Wait, yellow, take it. Okay. There we go. Basically, if you just pick something up and put it in your inventory, <clears throat> for the most part, all that will happen is someone will tell you to stop it. However, if you consume or use something straight from the uh, game world that doesn't belong to you, people will put up a big fuss. Oh, I need to get rid of that light gray. That doesn't look very good. It should just be a light shade, but no, it's not. So let's see if we can go to disabled. Okay. It's possible to speed the game up and to play the game at a ridiculous resolution, allowing you to see much more than you could actually see when uh, you played the game originally. It's almost cheap. It's almost cheap. Difficulty, we're going to leave on normal, and we're going to leave the mode to original. There's also a uh, space pauses, where you can pause the combat and uh, try to issue commands point by point. But you'll quickly find out, find out in this game that uh, combat is a little messy, to put it bluntly. Hello again, Fox. Clog asks, how may I help thee? Murder. Well, the man says, reflecting, I was home all night and my wife Ellen will certainly verify that, but as we say in the fellowship, worthiness precedes reward. Christopher must have done something bad, and the poor gargoyle at Inamo, tis a pity. I can't believe we'd say that. This dude has been murdered, gruesomely murdered, left a boy orphaned, and he says, well, the dude must have done something bad. Christopher. Christopher was a valued member of the Fellowship for some time. Unfortunately, we got into a petty argument last week. Wow. He just implicated himself. Last week, Christopher stated that he wanted to leave the Fellowship. Canst thou imagine? No, of course not. Well, we simply attempted to speak with him and alter his decision. Well, thanks for being forthright. The man verbally assaulted me and my companions with no provocation. Verbally assaulted. So he basically did nothing, huh? They have gone to Fellowship Headquarters in Britain. They were here delivering Fellowship funds. Their names are Elizabeth and Abraham. By the way, guys, it's no coincidence that around this time, a certain game company took control of uh, 
Origin bought them out and was not operating them properly. And if you notice, it's E Elizabeth and A Abraham, E and A, enough said. Enamo. Okay. Goodbye. Oops. Come on, get over there. Now, I've got all of the uh, documentation for the game. I've got the cloth map and the books and the CD and all that good stuff. I actually have a copy of the game, but not the original uh, box. Oh, I so wish I had the original box. That box was so cool. I think I can wear that. Let's see if I can wear that. See, these, uh, this is called the paper doll, where you actually see the armor on the character. This is actually from Serpent Isle, the, uh, what are, the sequel. In this game, it actually just showed you the item next to you. So, for example, the leather armor would sit right here just like that and point to your chest. Well, they updated it in the second game, so, yeah, I'm going to use the paper dolls because it looks nicer. Although they take up a little bit of space in your inventory, you'll want bags as a way to organize your inventory. I thought that's where you... Whoops. Uh, you'll, you'll start out with some junk that you don't need. You can just get rid of it. Food is useful in the game to a certain point. I'm trying to figure out what I just did with that dagger. Oh, there it is. Okay. You can read books. There's a lot of stuff you can interact with in this game. You can sleep in the bed. Okay. And am I supposed to be taking all this stuff? Well, no. But am I? Yes. Okay. Now, some of you guys may want to you know, mention on my channel, oh, hey Fox, did you know about the, uh, yeah, I know about it, guys, let's not even talk about it, and you know what I'm talking about. If you played this game before, there's something you can do super early in the game that basically completely breaks the game, and yeah, so please, don't, don't even mention it, because if, I want people to play this game the way it was meant to be played, not to get access to everything possible in the game, and just have like super cheats that's not cool so don't I'm gonna ask you guys a favor please don't mention the uh, early cheat in the game because it really does completely break the, uh, the flow of the game it's game breaking to the point where you can actually do stuff out of order not cool not cool okay this is the blacksmith Christopher his place you can hear the guardian laughing in the background not a lot in here, though. So our job is to investigate the murder. We basically have to ask people what's going on. I think I can talk to him. Or do I have to talk to someone else first? Let's find out. Knocked out unconscious. Pain. Blow to the head. Crown jewel. Johnson. Attackers. Gargan. Thank you. And I'll take that. And I'll take that. Alert the oh shoot. Once they start alerting the town guard, that's not good. I should have saved. It's a good idea to save before you steal stuff. Uh I'm trying to see how to save here. Oh, empty slot. Uh Trinsic one. There we go. So he didn't even care. You know, sometimes they care and sometimes they don't. It just, I don't know. It's... Alert the town guard? Oh, shoot. If you get away before the guard talks to you... Oh, shoot. You could usually be in pretty good condition. To the death? I'm the Avatar. You can't, you can't fight me to the death. Let's get out of there. Hope he forgets about it. Okay. Now the item we uh, stole back there is actually this. It's called a, uh, what is it called? Great Dagger. If you watch what happens when you swing it, it's a dagger, but watch what happens. Did you see? Here, I'm gonna see if you guys can see that. 
it becomes a sword. But it makes that terrible noise, I forgot about that, it makes that ringing noise. So, yeah, we're not gonna use that. Despite how nice it is, I can't tolerate that terrible ringing noise. Weapons will show up on your character in the game world, however, shields will not. So why is Ultima 7 such a great game? Well, let me tell you this. If you don't know, you've obviously never played it. It was just... It was, without a doubt, one of the most innovative and groundbreaking games ever released. It's a whip, Indiana Jones style. Because not only was there a ton of interactivity with the game world in general, not only did you have an isometric party-based RPG, which is awesome in itself, and not only did it have awesome graphics for the time and a huge game world, but it had NPCs that had 24-hour schedules. They would work during the day and go to different places, and at night they'd be at home sleeping. Had weather, day-night cycles, just a lot of uh, a lot of cool stuff. All right, this is Christopher's son. Christopher is the murder dude, so we're gonna ask him what he knows, and he discovered a dude with a hook. Yeah, get onto a boat called the Crown Jewel. May I join? Yes, of course. And he joins our party. You can have a fairly large party in this game. I think you can have up to six or seven characters. If, uh, Exalt adds some cool shortcuts. You can use the K key, and if you happen to have uh, the right key in your inventory, it'll just automatically use it. Of course, the uh, Serpent Isle had the expansion pack. A silver seed, which allowed you to get a magical key ring where you could just keep endlessly putting keys on it. Which is, of course, very cool. Crested Helm. I wonder what that looks like. There's a button for a quick save. I think it's F5. I don't know. I think it's F5. Do not touch that. Well, I obviously just touched it, my friend. Interesting. One thing about this game is it doesn't clearly indicate to you the uh, damage of... Oh my goodness, dude, you need some pants. It doesn't always clearly indicate the damage or value of weapons or items in the game. Uh-oh. He's going to make contact with us. Okay, now we just get away. I know, it's terrible. As the Avatar, I really shouldn't be engaging in such activities. Alright. I think we're about done intrinsic here. I, I do want to explore a little more, make sure I've gone everywhere and nabbed everything of value. Like I was saying, I do have all the original game stuff, including the game discs. But, it's possible to break chests open, by the way. See? Cool, huh? Here, take that cake. But I'm not going to be using those to get through the copy protection. The copy protection in the game at two points requires you to um, indicate some longitude, latitude things and answer some questions from some of the books. It, I mean, I guess it was more creative than just using what's obvious copy protection, but at the same time, it's copy protection and it's annoying. It really, it's not necessary. I mean, people can create ways around copy protection. See, we need to get him some pants. I know there's some pants around here somewhere, but not in there. There they are. Yeah, there we go. Okay, he's wearing them. So what I'm going to be doing is looking up the answers in a text file, which you can find online. A lot of people will use that text file to get around the copy protection, but that's really up to them. It's up to you guys whether you're going to get around copy protection or not in Pirate Game. So I'm not here to lecture anybody about pirating. It is what it is. People do what they do. I think there's one more guy I'd like to talk to, the shipwright. And there's some cool stuff in here to collect. <laughs> collect.
collect. What was that noise? That's me robbing you blind, my friend. Taking all of your stuff. Ooh, sextant. That can be of some value. Tell you your latitude and longitude. A gold bar is always a value. You can trade that in for a gold coin. At the mint in Britain. I think that's a health potion. Oops, don't want to use that. I like how we just robbed this guy's entire house and all he did was to keep asking, what is that noise? Uh-oh. Oh, shoot. Where'd that dude come from? Did he get called or did he come from uh, the last time I got involved? If he follows me all the way down here, he's going down. Sorry, buddy. Now, Ultima 7 actually does not track your virtues. Okay. We just gotta wait for everything to calm down before we can, uh, talk to the shipwright. I'm gonna sleep right in the middle of combat. <laughs> now, the Exalt engine does not perfectly emulate everything the way it was originally. But it gets very close. It, it gets satisfyingly close. And it fixes some of the other issues with the game engine originally, so I'm happy with it. Hook. Alright. It's off to Britain then. I think I grabbed everything I need there. You know, you gotta think, some of these people's houses are really small. Look at that, I mean. Dang, that's a small house. That's like... That's not even the size of a small shed. And one thing that's just really fun about this game is exploring. Just checking out what people have all over the place, going in different buildings. And uh, you can stumble upon some interesting stuff. Like, some really, really crazy stuff. Like, there's a, I think there's an island of uh, people on it, and they're not wearing any clothing, just running around, and it's just, it has nothing to do with the storyline, it's just there. And it never quite gets explained. There's just random stuff all over the place in this game, and it's, it's, it's stuff that they don't necessarily write any scripts over, they just happen to stick some stuff in it, which is really cool. And that's what I miss about a lot of games today. Despite the fact that you can wander around, you don't really find a lot of crazy off the wall, just random things. And it's mainly stuff that's scripted and planned for you to encounter. And, you know, it's got a regular story. And, you know, I just. I want, like, stuff like the old games, like Ultima 7, where you can just find an island and find some cool treasure on it. And there's no particular storyline to go with it. Getting some water. You do have to eat in this game, otherwise you start getting super hungry. And your characters start complaining about it. And there's tons of secrets in here, like this right here. Make your way back to the mayor's secret office. With some cool stuff. Like 46 gold coins. And a horse and carriage. Yep, I'll take that. Thank you very much. Animal housing. Yeah, interesting stuff in here, especially if you read it all. Alright, guys, I gotta look up the answers to this dude's crazy copy protection questions, so I will hook up with you in just a moment. Alright, guys, we should have all the answers we need to his copy protection questions. Hast thou properly searched the stables? Yes, I hath have. What didst thou find? I didst find a body. Well, that's obvious enough. A key. Ask Spark about it. He may know something. What? Like I didn't already ask him. Uh, the gold, medallion, scroll, shop. Okay, murder. Uh, no, that's fine. Okay. 
So hopefully that's enough. Let's try it now. Uh, let's see. Are thou ready to answer some questions concerning the investigation? Yes. Very well. What was Christopher's occupation? <clears throat> well, it doesn't make sense he would ask these questions. They're so basic. He's a blacksmith. What didn't thou find at the murder site? By the way, if you haven't discovered what you're supposed to, the option doesn't even appear down here. A key. What did the key open? A chest. What didst thou find in the chest? All of these. Dost thou have a suspect? Yes. What does this villain look like? A hook. Hmm, any deeds on finding this villain? Crown Jewel. The mayor's pleased. It seems that thou art pursuing thine investigation with genuine fervor. Methinks thou shouldst go to Britain and see if thou canst find this man with a hook. Here is half of thy reward, Bunny. Thou wilt receive the rest when thou dost prove that the killer hath been brought to justice. Hmm. Yeah, I may never get that. The mayor hands you 100 gold coins. Dost thou need the password? Well, I don't know, mayor. Do I need the password? Because without the password, I can't get out of Trinsic. So yes, I think I do. Before I give thee the password, I must admit I have had my doubts about thou truly being the avatar. I must ask thee to indulge me in order to satisfy my somewhat suspicious nature. I shall ask thee a few questions pertaining to copper protection. Alright. Blah 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 blah. What longitude runs through the center of the island of Buccaneers Din? 60. Oh, that's not it. 60. Check. What latitude runs through the center of Dagger Isle? Zero. What latitude runs through the center of Buccaneer's Den? Didn't he just ask that? 60. Excellent. I have no doubt now that thou art the one true avatar. Oh, I almost forgot. The password to leave or enter the town is Blackbird. Excellent. By the way, like I said, if, even if you knew Blackbird ahead of time, which I did, it still won't appear as a conversation option. So... Ultima 7 wasn't the first one to do this kind of dialogue tree structure, but uh, it, it was one of the first very popular RPGs to really perfect it and, and to push it forward. And you'll notice the same type of uh, dialogue structure in a game like uh, the Super Nintendo's Shadowrun. What is the password? Uh, I don't know. Blackbird. Terrible sound effects, I know. Trust me, guys. Back in the day... This was awesome. And it still yes, is right now. That is the proper direction to travel, Avatar. These icons at the bottom are added by the Exalt engine. They're not naturally part of the game. Alright guys, we have exited Trinsic. And we're going to go ahead and cut it there. And we will pick up next time as we head towards Britain to continue our pursuit of Hook. And the murder of poor Christopher. In the Garbo. Later guys.